What is justice, righteousness, law? From Faith Life Church, Gary's thought-provoking series, The Cry for Justice, and today's message, We Need Righteous Government. Let's just briefly review our key scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Very familiar scripture to most of us. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap what? Sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. We talked about the process of prospering because this is listing right here in this scripture a process. And a farmer knows that process very well. But I said, Christians don't. We quote this scripture, but we don't know what it means. You say, well, pastor, I know what sowing and reaping means. But really, you really need to know the process because if you sow, you have to decide where are you sowing, what are you sowing, and when do you sow, and what equipment's necessary. And then if you reap, I mean, is there something you do in between sowing and reaping? If you reap, what, when, where, what? I said a farmer has a very, very good, distinct understanding of the process before it ever starts. I also said that the process does not end with the corn. In other words, you're sowing seed and it grows because the corn, the objective is the marketplace, not the corn. And you have to understand that when you start because it may determine what you sow and how you sow. But the bottom line is that there is a process of prospering that you have to understand the entire process to actually take advantage of it. And unfortunately, I believe so many Christians don't understand the process, all of the details. But my book covers some of that. We talked about the power of provision, and we've covered it in these five sessions. And we want to talk about, again, the framework of prospering. Remember we talked about that? Okay, thank you. (laughs) The framework of prospering, because it's not just about sowing and reaping. It happens inside a framework because, as I said, you're heading to the marketplace which has laws, taxation, laws of commerce. In other words, these natural laws and natural things are going to have a great bearing on your prosperity. Even though you may have the sowing and reaping down, it doesn't operate in a vacuum. You live in the earth realm, and the laws that surround you are going to affect greatly your prosperity. We said it'd make a big difference if you had a 70% tax bracket or a 10% tax bracket. There's also other laws and fees involved in prospering in the world of marketing and commerce. So you have to be aware of the process, complete process, to take advantage of these laws. God gave you the laws. Farmer has the laws of sowing and reaping. He has to understand the process, and he prospers by them. So the framework is the laws that surround what you're doing. I said that we see sowing and reaping, those are verbs. So guess what? You're doing that. God causes the seed to grow, but you are the one that is doing the sowing and the reaping, right? All right, so we understand it's a process. Today I want to go on past that. We said this, now if these laws are governing how much profit you make, who makes the laws? Politicians. How do they get in office? You vote for them. I said, we have a problem. 45% of Christians don't vote. So how or why would they complain about taxes or anything, right? Yeah, these laws that, that are part of the process, the framework of your prosperity, are, are laws in the natural realm that are put in place by politicians, which you vote for. And so we understand that laws and governors or people in government have a huge bearing on the reaping or the benefit of this process. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 4 says, by justice a king gives a country stability. Now justice means the administration of law. A king gives stability to its nation, his nation by actually requiring the laws to be followed. So stability is when you have law and order. But those who are greedy for bribes tear it down. Proverbs chapter 17, 20, one whose heart is corrupt does not what? Does not prosper. One whose tongue is perverse falls into trouble. If you have corrupt politicians, you might have corrupt results, right? Proverbs chapter 28, 18, the one whose walk is blameless is kept safe, but the one whose ways are perverse fall into a pit. So today's topic is we have the process, we have the laws, but what happens if the process becomes corrupted? 
What happens if the people that make the laws become perverse? What happens if the entire system has been corrupted by perversity? Is there an answer for that? The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 18, the one whose walk is blameless is kept safe, but the one whose ways are perverse fall into the pit. And if the leader is doing that, guess what could happen to the entire nation? Trouble. Proverbs eleven twenty. 20, the Lord detests those whose hearts are perverse, but he delights in those whose ways are blameless. And of course, we've quoted this one the entire series, Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns What's the next word? Any people. Now, in the United States, we may be deceived into thinking that we are immune of these kinds of results. But last week, I made a point to make it very clear to you that in one generation, we saw Judah change from a blessed nation to a nation that going into captivity in one, one generation. So don't be deceived into thinking this great country of the United States will stand if it decides to abandon righteousness. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.